let's get started on the case of Bronze Age Pervert, because this whole news popped uh, one hour, two hours before the show, but my first intent was to talk about Bronze Age Pervert, who has been exposed to have had ties with Israeli intelligence, who is apparently, in my view, I think that there's enough evidence to conclude that Bronze Age Pervert uh, is from Jewish families and uses a fake accent to pass as this kind of brute from Eastern Europe, but you will see him behave when he's not in character, and clearly he's capable of speaking a perfect English, almost perfect English, with a very, very slight Eastern European accent. Apparently, uh, he is from a family from Eastern Europe, from Romania, I believe, who they moved uh, to America in, in a, a town called Newton. And Newton is the highest Jewish concentration for a single city in America, with Jews at 30% in that town. Uh, his whole family and collaborators and collaborators of his family uh, works in the academia, uh, where he did get a, a, a diploma of some sort, I believe at MIT. And he, he did a PhD thesis on Socratic philosophy and that kind of stuff. I read parts of the thesis. I read the evidence. I believe that we can conclude that Bronze Age Pervert was someone who uh, wrote books and tried to incorporate as much as he could. Because I, I listened to his podcast and I had never listened to him before today. So I started today doing a deep dive. And what I find is he's hitting on all the bells, anti-liberal, anti-Marxism, right-wing, pro-male, uh, pro-homeschooling even, uh, pro-Western civilization, but we will get to what, what does that mean? When you are a Jew displaying a fake accent of an Eastern European to fit in, and you, you speak English much better than you truly do it do in public. What does that mean when you consider that there is an attack of liberalism against Western civilization? What kind of Western civilization do you think you're a part of when you say this? And I would like to invite people, if you want to go watch the movie by Jim Carrey, uh, with Jim Carrey as the main actor, Men on the Moon. Uh, I, I think I have hints that Andy Kaufman, uh, Andy Kaufman, who's a uh, played by Jim Carrey in that movie, uh, is the example of what I'm talking about. And here's a, a scene not from the movie, but from the actual life of Andy Kaufman, because he was a real man, a Jew who was uh, trying to be a comedian, but, you know, was doing this kind of, you know, that, that kind of comedy that most people don't find truly funny. You know, that kind of weird, ah, uh, uh, is it even comedy? <laughs> So, one of the favorite, apparently based on the movie, one of the favorite characters of Andy Kaufman was Tony Clifton, a kind of Italian singer. Uh, yes, it sounds like Sasha Baron Cohen also. Uh, many times we have seen Jews uh, participating to their public life under an absolute character with marked uh, ethnic uh, delineation, you know, a, an exaggeration in the imitation of a local race or local ethnic. And here Tony Clifton was the whole incarnation of, uh, of an Italian singer of some kind, like Italian-American singer. Nice to see everybody out here. Everybody feeling good? All right. Yeah, I just came back uh, from the East. Let me tell you something. It was so uh, cold there. How cold was it? I don't ask you. I didn't ask you. Can we start this again? I, I didn't ask you. I didn't ask you. Come on up here. Why don't you come up here? So see the ethnic exaggeration, exaggeration of the accent for the purpose of uh, of comedy, of a kind of, oh, I'm doing it so much that it's funny. Uh, it seems that Bronze Age Pervert was engaging in the same kind of stuff. And just because I didn't know who the guy was, I also looked into his book, uh, so Bronze Age Mindset. And, and it's those talking points of, yeah, let's be, let's be those brutal men from Bronze Age again. 
that was his theme, and it, it's kind of weird. Let me read here just a part of the introduction. In the Bronze Age, men had life and force, and I already see far on the horizon of our world, but the glimmer is surely there. May it not be a mirage. I see the spirit returning surely in our time. Piratical bands and brotherhoods will take to the seas, and not just to the seas, the enemies of Western men and the enemies of beauty are to learn just what was meant by a piratical race, a nest of pirates like the Chinese thought of the Dutch on first meeting them. I want to prepare you to receive this old spirit. Old spirits are moving from behind the reeds. The silhouette shimmers against a river in late summer, and I see already men who know how to honor such uncanny old friends. May they inhabit us again and give us strength to purify this world of refuse. So this kind of uh, masculinist poetry, but posing at it, as it, and almost exaggerated in the very same way that Andy Kaufman was exaggerating his accent. See, because I, I consider myself an anarcho-primitivist. I love the past. I love, uh, <clears throat> I love the idea of going back to simpler times. But I would never be as exaggerated as shitting this piece of crap that he just uh, shit onto Amazon. It's ridiculous. Uh, going back to the seas? Are you fucking kidding me? And so, <clears throat> all we knew from a picture perspective was that Bronze Age pervert would be a nudist bodybuilder, uh, would be a kind of, would be recognized as a far right entity. And we had his back. And Keith on Twitter has presented a beautiful case, uh, gathering all of the information, concluding that there, there were two parallel personalities that Bronze Age Pervert has been enacting onto the public space. He was Bronze Age Pervert with an accent on YouTube, but he was also a student of MIT with a public presence, Kostin Alamario who also tried to reach celebrity on his own in this character, tried to reach celebrity <coughs> by writing articles in half-known blogs and the Daily Caller, but eventually his article at the Daily Caller got deleted, and it was all teenager-level thoughts about war, Russia is evil, and that kind of stuff, but all very framed so that a right-wing mind could approach this and not feel that it's an Israeli talking point. The Bronze Age pervert persona belongs to Kostin Alamariu, a Jewish Romanian. Okay, not MIT, it's Yale, sorry. So it's not MIT, it is Yale. <coughs> a Jewish Romanian Yale graduate. This information has been an open secret for years, yet strangely ignored by the SPLC, ADL, and other Antifa groups, despite BAP's substantial influence. <clears throat> Firstly, subscriber to Browns Edge Pervert's Gumroad podcast, noted statements appeared in their bank statements with the name Kostin and the letters Allah. Gumroad confirmed the podcast belongs to a person of this name. So already there is a bank role leading to Costa Alam Costin Alamario uh, in relation to the production of his podcast. Next, there is Alamario's father, Andre, who he credits in his PhD thesis alongside his mother, Aurelia. Bernard's public Facebook page follows a small account that reposts Bronze Age Pervert. Pretty odd for a Jewish boomer mostly focused on Israeli issues. So the Facebook of his father's of his father, looks like a boomer Facebook, and Israel stuff, Israel stuff, Israel stuff, and then suddenly videos of Bronze Age pervert. So, and when this was exposed, uh, his father deleted all of his page on Facebook. So it seems that the truth was touched. Once this was exposed, uh, he ran away, and that, that is evidence of guilt further that stacks onto what we already have. Finally, we can recognize the voice of Bronze Edge Pervert in this public university video where Bill Mitchell was giving a conference. And you can see that someone in the crowd comes to ask a question. But then we get to see 
the true accent of uh, Custon Alamario. And the true accent is much less pronounced than what he usually performs on his YouTube channel. Yes, um, I noticed that you asked about the question uh, to which Trump is the answer and what the problem is and why people are dissatisfied. Uh, there were people, uh, I would have to say, unlike uh, probably most of you who predicted Trump's win maybe a year in advance, including Ann Coulter and Steve Saylor and many others, and who knew that the animating question was... So for those who know a Brown's Edge pervert's voice, uh, let me compare. So, so you just heard, there's a little bit, uh, there's a little bit of uh, Eastern European accent. But compare this to how he performs when he's on his channel on Brown's Edge Pervert. The, a, a day, there is no reason for students to be in public schools for longer than four or five hours. And the creation instead of vigorous scouting and nature movements, separate for boys and girls, that would take the place of the modern schooling system. I am for this. And this may sound like a radical... Pro it's almost like uh, Slavoj Zizek or something. It's, uh, it is... Uh, very saliva influenced verbality it is uh, very heavy very liquid but it would seem if we compare this to when he acts not in character it would seem that he had a full persona in brown's edge pervert that he was displaying much more eastern europeanness and much more exaggerated ethnic traits than is real proposals I mean, it's very rare that you will converge towards such a thick Eastern European accent. This is the kind of accent I would expect in someone who lives, perhaps, in Eastern Europe. But apparently, Bronze Edge Pervert has been living in Newton, uh, a Jewish city in the U.S. But I think, actually, they're not radical at all. They're moderate and prudent proposals. And a nationalist or a populist politician could put such things forward. Now, people were telling me, Jeff, we all knew that this was a fake accent. It was obvious from the accent itself that it was exaggerated. Well, I think there's some level of deception involved here. I mean, your accent is, every, is the conception that people develop of you. And it is the ethnic conception that people develop of you. Uh, I think it is pretty fair to say that you are carrying false meaning when you are carrying a false accent. Uh, point six, the Alamarius are immigrants from Romania who moved to Newton, Massachusetts. Newton is the most Jewish city in America, earning it the title of Jewton. <coughs> Costin's father, Andre, who worked at the MIT. Okay, this is where I'm mistake. So his father was at the MIT. Him was at Yale. Dedicates almost all of his public posts to Israeli national security issues. This is not just a typical Israel-loving boomer. He is well up on Israeli concerns in the region. Almost all of his friends are Jews. And he scrubbed his Facebook in response to the exposition of those facts. Kostin, uh, that is Brown's Edge Pervert's brother, is Dan, an international banker married to a Jewish woman. Kostin's great-uncle, Lipa Alamaru, is listed by the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum in its Holocaust Survivors and Victims database. The same Lipa Alamaru is listed in his obituary as the uncle of BAP's father, Andre Alamaru. Interestingly, the surname Alamaru, Kostin's parents, changed it to Alamaru as its highest concentration in Israel. It is also well represented on the Holocaust Survivors database. Costin's academic background is also heavily Jewish. At Columbia University, he studied his master's under Zionist David Sidorsky, who he calls his mentor in his, in his PhD thesis. Sidorsky served on the board of directors of the Jewish Institute for National Security Affairs. Alamario studied his PhD under the supervision of Stephen B. Smith and Brian Garston, both of whom are Jewish. Smith is a Strassian who has written a number of books on Jewish identity. Kostin's other supervisor, Brian Garston, works with the Jewish Artog Foundation and Tikva Fund. A former lecturer of Kostin described how he would wear an IDF shirt to the gym to start debates about the conduct of Israel. 
So that is not directly related to Custon, but the point is, is, uh, is educational involvement at Yale was supervised heavily by Jews and Jews that are interested, including his father. Jew there are Jews around him that are extremely interested in Jewish identity, Israel, and Zionism. As an undergraduate, so that's, that's being interesting here because we get an old text uh, that Alamaru, a Bronze Age pervert, would have written back in his university days. And this gives us insight into how a young Jew rising in America, wanting to become some kind of internet celebrity through writing, it gives us an idea of how they approach the question of Muslims in this particular case. Muslim in action on Chechenia. So that was in 2002. So imagine that Chechenia is the next advance of Russia, because that's what happened ultimately. You know, Chech the Chechen war was a war for the control of Chechnya and was successfully led by Russia. Uh, so he's seeing this. And just like Ukraine today is a war of expansion of Russia, back then, the war of expansion was toward, <coughs> toward Chechnya. Uh, before I continue, let's read our super chats. Cloud Warmer had said at the beginning, Jeff, I don't even see the code in the matrix anymore. I just see psyops, subversion, false narratives, propaganda, bad actors, controlled opposition, tactical boomerism, Fed posting, <laughs> and cookification. It's a bright pink, neon, cyberpunk version of Plato's cave. When will the people of the world be free? Uh, that's a beautiful description, Cloud Warmer. Uh, never, probably never. We, we cannot evolve toward freedom. We can only run toward it. Cloud Warmer says, Jeff, this BAP situation reminds me of Tyler Bingham, one of the founders of the Harian Brotherhood, a notorious white supremacist prison gang. He and other notable members of the Aryan Brotherhood are documented to be Jewish or part Jewish, which is not without its own irony. Oh yeah, we, we can see uh, historically, we can see Jews being able to play the two sides of this white supremacist thing. Uh, so Muslim in action on Chechnya, a written letter to the editor by Kostan Alamariu, Bronze Age pervert in 2002. Last spring, as the Russian war in Chechnya was ending, as the whole world looked away from the terrible rapes, murders, thievery, and humiliation. So a first signature here, all, a first signature of a, a Jewish political preference. Always label your enemy as the genocide. You know, even if it's a bilateral war involving two parties, Oh, there! Russia is always the ones committing the rapes, the thievery. The... So already we see here a beginning of the the frame game here. Uh, shout out to our friend Frame Game who disappeared from the internet, but we have the frame game laid out right here. <clears throat> the Russian army on the civilians of this small Muslim nation, yet found the time to slander the democratically elected government of Austria. I wrote a short but urgent letter to the MIT Muslim Students Association and its leaders. I assume they knew about most of what I had to say, at least regarding the Russian atrocities. But I also informed them they could help fellow Muslims. I was trying to advertise a bank account number to which all can donate to the cause of the Chechen Mujahideen, the freedom fighters. I was completely ignored. So... He wants to talk with the Muslim community, and he's like, "Don't you realize? Don't don't you realize what is being committed against your brothers? Don't you want to help?" And he has a bank account number. Send money to this bank account number. He wanted to advertise bank transfers <coughs> that would be used to fund a revolution against Russia, basically, because at this point Russia has taken over Chechnya. So he wanted to fund a Muslim insurrection against Russia. This is, this is the masculinist, tough guy who, who's like about bodybuilding and all that kind of stuff, and who's about to make you a better man who will go for the seas like the Bronze Age people back in their days. He was already, as a young undergraduate university student, fomenting 
insurrection against Vladimir Putin. Whoa. I find this hypocritical and outrageous. He's referring here to the fact that the Muslims didn't listen to him. <laughs> they didn't send money to his bank account. Oh my God. Especially since one of the leaders of the MSA is a Bosnian Muslim. At least, you know, a Bosnian Muslim. I would expect you to do a little bit of money transfer here. I see that this organization is more concerned with distributing pamphlets and holding cookouts than with helping save Muslims' lives. Black Lives Matter. B.A.P. was ahead of his time. <clears throat> B.A.P. as a young child almost was trying to yell Muslims' lives matter to Muslims, trying to, trying to foment a, a counteraction against Vladimir Putin in Russia. Isn't that fascinating? This guy was engaged in exactly what the blue check mark have been engaged for two years now in this whole Ukrainian resistance. And you go, girl, you go get, you, you go receive a uh, ar Russian artillery girl. And he was saying to the Muslims, don't you realize how much it's, your, it, it's in your interest to combat the advancement of Russia? I can't believe this. I see that this organizer, okay, blah, 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 help save Muslim lives and helping the cause of Islam. So what do you have to say about the cause of Islam? You don't understand it? You're Jewish. I should say, though, that their conduct is not much worse than that of most Muslim countries. Oh, okay, so it's really all Muslim countries that he has issues with. And here we see a taint of the, a tint of the, uh, the Israeli uh, issue against Muslim nations. Most Arab nations are very vocal about Israeli persecution of Palestinians, but shut their eyes to much worse abuses carried out by Russians upon Chechens. In defense of Israel, he says, look, look stop, stop bringing all that attention toward the Palestinian rights being oppressed. Look at, how, look at what Vladimir Putin is doing against the Chechens. I would like to be able to put that account number in this letter, but unfortunately it is no longer working, and the war effort is not so vigorous as it used to be. I encourage all, however, to visit the sites kavkaz.org and kokaz.net. It is in Chechnya, not in Austria, China, or Israel, that human suffering and abject misery exist. What a subversive strategy here. Is saying that it's not in Israel that human suffering exists, i.e., it is not the attention, your attention should not be directed at what my people is doing to Muslims in Palestine. It should be directed to some other country out there. Go, go fight Putin. Go fight Putin. Stop thinking about me and us. <clears throat> Further evidence BAP regularly collaborates with his friend Edward Lutwak a fellow Romanian Jew and deep state spook who served in the IDF and U.S. National Security Council. These days, Ed is especially passionate about anti-Semitism, lambasting Hollywood for not punishing anti-Semites. So here's an example of what we can expect from Edward Lutwak. Many delight in denouncing anti-Semitism, yet refuse to act to punish individual anti-Semites. Anti the Jews who run the TV program in which a comic called Chappelle incited a professional pogrom against Jews in Hollywood have apparently not fired him. No excuses for their cowardice. Okay, so th we've heard this. We've, this is the Eric Weinstein's, uh, Eric Weinstein's, uh, what, what did he say? He said cultural punishment. This is the cultural punishment. Dave Chappelle hasn't received this cultural punishment, and Edward Ludwak is here to make sure that it happens. And just in case, just in case some of you guys would say, Jeff, this is all indirect evidence that Bronze Age pervert is Jew. I, I grant you uh, the fairness of your argument, my friend. And in response, I will give the admission by Bronze Age pervert himself in 2015 at a time where he was much more open about his Jewishness, he answered a tweet at some point saying, I'm not neo-reactionary, I'm a nude bodybuilder and a fascist. 
I'm also Jewish. This is is this okay? Uh so you don't support Israel as a Jewish state? Are you an anti-Semite? There could be a level of sarcasm in the second tweet, but I see difficultly the first tweet being explained as sarcasm. It does seem that Bronze Edge Pervert is well connected with the networks of pro-Israeli, anti-Putin, anti-Russian networks of geopolitics, academia, and intelligence. I can only conclude this in response to uh, this evidence presented by Keith on Twitter. And I, his Twitter account is at Internet Radical. I highly recommend you follow him because I had a couple of people come to me with Brown's Edge Pervert and saying, Jeff, what do you think about him? And I needed something like this. I needed a layout of what are the most relevant arguments. And I think it's a beautiful case that was put together by Keith. Cloud Warmer says, on the whole ideology of Brown's Edge mindset and reversion to or embracing the nostalgia of bygone eras, what is, in your opinion, the condition that causes this? Why do people yearn to go back to the past? Do people forget that despite aspects of the past that maybe were good, it was not perfect? Well, I think that uh, inevitably, you are gene-centered around your past. You know, your genes are centered to a point in the past such that anything, anything that happens in, in the present and future is always stacking upon in an irregular manner, unless the world doesn't change, but typically the world changes. And so anything that adds is in more conflict with your gene. And I think it's a natural, uh, it's a natural instinct and reaction to have, to be uh, wanting to reset it, to be closer to what your genes need and what your genes want. Oh, yeah, and Keith Woods is on the regular chat. I want to thank Keith Woods. because I don't know. Is Keith Woods Keith? <laughs> because I don't know. Maybe it's Keith Wood. But because Keith, I mean, it sounds like it's Keith Wood. Anyways, I see that Keith Woods is on the regular chat. And I have to say that my attention was brought to Internet Radicals thread by Keith Woods on Telegram. Okay, I think it is him. I will not... I don't know. I'm just someone who doesn't know anything. But I will just say, could be him. Uh, and yeah, what a beautiful case. A beautiful case with the... Uh, the there's a juice box. Uh, Keith uses the juice box emoji here. What does that mean? Is that a dog whistle? I don't know. But there's a juice box with a straw. What is in that box, Keith? What, what is it that you're drinking? Because this is good stuff. This is excellent stuff. <clears throat> BAPS uh, and the 19th argument was BAPS identity also shows itself in his attacks on the anti-Semitism of the radical right. For BAP, there really is no Jewish question, just globalist cabals of all kinds, some of whom happen to be Jewish. And I saw him react in some of these podcasts and and people were telling me, Jeff, how could he be a Jew? He keeps talking about the Jewish question. Well, that's the whole, that's the whole mask put, put, being put on. Because when, when you're into the gatekeeping business to keep people from actually examining IDs honestly, you end up recruiting a lot of your talking points to your right, and then you present them. But you present them in a sterile way where you hope to gatekeep, where you hope to close the doors that could be opened by a single fact. And I would definitely say that having heard him talk about the Jewish question, it's definitely not because someone talks about Jews that he's not a Jew. Uh, you know, it keeps happening that Jews are tempted more and more to engage with far-right arguments, and they get tempted, and one does it a little too much, and then he gets criticized, and then one does it a little more, and then he gets criticized. But there is always this, uh, this inner conflict in the Jewish intellectual as to whether to ignore or to address uh, the truths of an argument. And I, I think he's exactly at that layer. He's exactly there. And another signature I, would, I, was, I was digging through his uh, Twitter account. By the way, Bronze Edge Pervert has not been tweeting for years. He's not been uploading videos for years on his main YouTube account. 
So I don't know what that means. Does he have some other outlet where that I don't know about, or did he really disappear from the internet? I have no idea. Uh, but look at his position. Of course, uh, on Catalan nationalism, you can always detect uh, this as a test issue because Catalan nationalism is very much about a local European ethne reaching sovereignty from uh, <clears throat> reaching sovereignty from okay Keith is telling me he has a new Twitter it's at Bronze Age Mantis okay so I was wondering thank you very much for letting me know I will I will add it to the show notes so that people can see his latest statements uh, Bronze Edge pervert there he is uh, so the issue of Catalan nationalism always uh, always uh, is a slicer on will you side with European local identity when it shows or will you hate it? Or will you try to dissuade by putting other ethnies against each other? And I want, to, I want you to really look into this tweet. Catalan nationalism is worthless. Half of all Muslims in Spain live in Catalonia. This, this is critical. Catalan nationalism is worthless. So an anti-nationalist position, you don't get your country. But it's fascinating what he does. He can't help it. Half of all Muslims in Spain <coughs> live in Catalonia. He can't help but to use the Muslims to create a racial clash. And what was he doing? What was he doing 15 years ago? In 2020, uh, 2022, so 21 years ago. What was he doing 21 years ago? He was trying to clash the Muslims against Vladimir Putin. The art of Jewish intellectualism often lies in the triangles of conflicts and interests that they perceive and try to exploit. And you can always have a final judgment on their recruitment of these facts to their advantage into knowing that they are made of the same strand as the Israelis, the people of the deep state in America. They take two races and they say, fight against each other, please. Bap was saying in, 20, in 2002 to Muslims, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for to kill my, my enemy Vladimir Putin? What are you waiting for to destroy Russia and cause an insurrection against Russia? And here he's saying, hey, Catalans, what are you, what are you thinking? You're going to be a more concentrated Muslim nation. Do you really want to be a Muslim nation? Well, Bronze Edge pervert, uh, 21 years ago, you, you seemed very friendly to the Muslims when you needed them. Now you're telling uh, the Catalans they shouldn't want to hang with these Muslims? Why? And ultimately, the answer why is Brown's Edge pervert, Keith Woods is correct. Keith is correct. Brown's Edge pervert is a Jew, and he interprets the position of other races around him as a Jew. That's how, the, the same way Andy Kaufman experienced the Italianism of Tony Clifton as a tool to display something and, and to, to make people laugh in his case. But Bab doesn't want to make people laugh. He wants to manipulate their political decision for his own interest. So that apparently is the freshest account of Bronze Edge Pervert, Bronze Edge Mentis. Thanks to Keith for letting me know. So yes, apparently he's been more active on this one. Uh, yeah, it's a fascinating insight into the mind of uh, these people when they engage in public discourse because they have a thought. You know, if I think about and talk about or talk to Muslims. And even Jordan Peterson did that to some extent. I talk to them as a sovereign entity because I understand I'm not Muslim. I'm never going to, I'm never going to make an argument of the form, hey, Muslims, do you really believe in your Quran? Well, uh, you know, your Quran says this. So if you really want to be a good Muslim, you might want to do this and then recruit the Muslims to something that I want them to do. That wouldn't cross my mind because I have a European mindset. I, don't, I may not have the Bronze Age mindset, but I have the European mindset. And to me, that would be deceptive. 
But to someone like Bronze Edge Pervert, it isn't. It's the game. Solidus says, given BAP is an Israeli psyop, the only logical conclusion is that all Armonite, Amarnite talking points are Israeli too. I don't even know what an Armonite is. <laughs> By the way, if you'd like to uh, support the show, use the dollar button under the Odyssey chat. Odyssey super chats are my favorite way to receive support for the show. And uh, if you would like to see the dollar button, make sure you add a payment uh, method in your Odyssey account. Uh, what else do we have? Yeah, so we have uh, we have an old Twitter account that he had started as a student. And see, in parallel to developing his career as Bronze Edge Pervert, he was also developing a public career under his actual identity. History of political philosophy, writing books on ancient tyrants, classical ideas of heredity, documenting the end of the post-war liberal order. <coughs> And we can see some of his uh, articles. In 2016, he was writing under his real name. Putin won International Vampires Zero. Which you, and you can see how this is framed. You might think, oh, well, isn't that a based article? Well, it's a based article in that he's saying the left is wrong about Trump and Russia being linked to each other. But that is not for him... That is not him trying to, uh, trying to, to save Vladimir Putin and Russia. It's him trying to save Trump because he's part of this Jewish contingent of intellectuals who sided with Trump, who, who thought Trump was a good thing. And so they wanted to protect him from being perceived as an agent of the axis of evil, which they think stems in Russia. Uh, here you have Muckrack listing old articles that he had written under his real name, The Daily Caller, Palladium Magazine, all very uninteresting and overwritten, I would say overwritten crap. Uh, this is how a teenager writes, uh, you know, with these, uh, these big poetic moments that don't say much. Uh, it, it, I really don't like reading this crap. So that is it for my review of uh, Brown's Edge Pervert. Again, you know, uh, Keith Wood, the man who I've had disagreements with at the philosophical and metaphysical level. But man, do we connect uh, him and I. Man, do I agree with his approach in terms of laying out the facts, taking conclusions, and exposing the facts that need exposing. Because so much of the right-wing speech on the internet is grifting. We have to have mechanism that allow detecting the original thought from the copy, the, the grifter from the real thinker. And here, I believe we have a total grifter. In fact, there were people learning about it just today with my thumbnail. They were entering the chat before the show, and they were like, no, not Bronze Edge Pervert. So apparently, this guy had, a, had developed a strong following uh, in, a, in his deceptive way. And so it's it's good to have agents of truth like Keith who who go after this. Keith Wood says it's sad what what has happened to the online right the past few years. Absolutely, uh, but at the same time we were hit with censorship. And let me tell you, the the generation that will have survived this censorship and that will re rise on the current Twitter, I have big hopes. I think uh, I think we will be made stronger and. As long as you take people like Browns Edge Pervert and you, you expose them and you find who they are, uh, I, I see a great future because we still have an intellectually more interesting movement as of today. Despite all the censorship and all the attacks and the debanking, we still are in a better position than the left intellectually. Because go, go on a podcast of the left and it's all circle jerking. It's no exposition to the opposite argument. It's non-factual, it's emotional, it's harm-based. Uh, there is really nothing interesting intellectually in the left. It's just, the question in the leftist podcast is just how much of reality will they be willing to obfuscate from their view as they speak? That, that is what you looked, that is why you check a leftist podcast. Doubting Thomas says, Jeff, the big red flag for me is the use of the word pervert in his internet identity. Why would you embrace a term associated with unconstructive and abnormal sexual desire as opposed to a healthy, proper direction towards reproduction and family? 
Yes, in, in a way, he is in line with the very liberal order that he criticizes. Because if you're going to be a pervert, like sometimes I will say that I'm a pervert, but in a joking manner, because ultimately I advocate strongly for monogamy and family life. But if you're really going to identify truly as a pervert, uh, then there's something wrong with this guy. You know, he's not in line with the reproductive strategy that will counter that will counter the liberal order that he claims to be fighting. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CAC Adolfo. Remember to like and subscribe.